Hey guys, it is Miss Sam Reno. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And yes, it's another base game only home. I say that with hesitation because I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I was putting out nothing but base game homes and it was mainly because I wanted the challenge. However, in the midst of all of that and the release of kits, we actually got a 21st anniversary update to base game, which I was very excited about. You guys have probably been playing with it for weeks and weeks at this point, but I wanted to do a base game home that included those new objects just to kind of see where I would use them, how I would use them, and really just to continue to kind of spread the love with base game only homes because I know that there are a lot of folks that can't get all of the packs and this might be perfect. You might be able to like have base game and maybe get one of the new kits or maybe you picked out an expansion, a game, and like a stuff pack or something because I know that you can now make your own bundles. I'm not really sure how that works because I know that I am very privileged in the fact that I do have all of the packs and I was able to buy the kits that I wanted when they came out. So all in all, just reinforcing why I like to do base game homes every now and then because one, it's a challenge for me, but two, it allows people to actually download my builds more and kind of see how versatile base game can be because I'm always surprised. But for this one, I wanted to make a cottage. My favorite style of home is the Dutch Colonial. I've mentioned that a few different times, though I don't build a lot of those homes because... To be honest, they're very challenging and I don't think they're very efficient with space, the way in which you have to build them in The Sims 4. At least the way that I do build them and the way that I found works, you don't really get to maximize space on that second floor because you have to do a lot with roofing to make it look like Dutch Colonial roofing. I don't know, there's just a lot of unique aspects of building a Dutch Colonial home in The Sims 4 that makes it really difficult to have an upstairs that doesn't look wonky. At least I haven't figured it out yet. Of course, there are many talented builders and I'm sure some people make some incredible Dutch Colonials. I am not one of them, but I wanted to kind of build a little bit of a cottage that resembled a Dutch Colonial. I don't know if this would technically be considered one, but Maybe it would be, I'm not quite sure. It looked a little bit odd. It took me a while to get comfortable with the shape of this home, but from the front, I just loved it so much that I couldn't resist. And as you can see, we're in the debug menu doing the landscaping now, and I love this fence. I don't know how I have overlooked this fence for so long. It is in the base game debug menu, and it looks like it's semi overgrown a little bit in places. So I wanted to kind of bring the landscaping up against that fence as well, because Maybe that's why it's growing on the fence posts. And I think actually the last time I did use it was over a year ago, but I overlook it all the time for base game and I don't know why I do that. I think I only used it in the build I'm referring to because I think it was like an eco build or something. I, I can't even remember at this point. I'm surprised I'm even recollecting that I've used it before, but... We are trying to finish up the landscaping here. I do end up completing the backyard at the end of the build, but I do carry some of the landscaping down here because I just wanted to make sure that I had the space adding landscaping the way that I do at least. You don't have a lot of space sometimes because it ends up being very full and it kind of spreads out a little bit and then all of a sudden you realize you don't have a backyard. So I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I had enough space in the backyard to kind of put some activities but I love love the shape of this house. I like I said it took a while for it to grow on me but I really liked using the blue accent on the door and the stairs and now we're on to the interior where I did kind of section up the rooms in a little bit of a different way. And the only reason I noted is because I actually used a like diagonal wall. I don't do that very often. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but I used a diagonal wall and initially I was a little bit concerned because I thought it would throw off me being able to identify where the center of the room was, which is why I don't do it because I want my furniture more often than not to be centered in a room because I was thinking that that room is going to be the dining room and then right here in the entryway, basically you just walk right into the living room. But that is one of the items that we got with the 21st anniversary update that was made by Peacemaker CC. I love their custom content. I don't use it very often in my game, but there was one time I think that I highlighted it because they had screen doors and windows. <laughs> Blessings. I wish we had screened in doors and windows because we could actually make like porches that are screened in and maybe it protects you from like bugs and stuff like that. I think that would be so cool. But I wanted this to be a little bit more of a colorful base game home because usually what I do is I try to make the wood tones consistent throughout the whole house when I use base game. 
really when I do anything in The Sims, but I try to use consistent wood tones and I really just pick like one color for the wallpaper per room and I don't do accent walls very often. So I just wanted to diversify things. So I made like a brick accent wall and I thought it looked so good. And considering that I used this green swatch for the console table, I thought the yellow furniture, which is quite bright. However, yellow is my favorite color, so I wasn't deterred from it, but it is quite bright. But I thought it was perfect because green and yellow go great together, at least in my opinion. I don't believe they're complementary colors. I think yellow and purple are, which is also why I thought it was a great idea to use this new plant decoration, which was created by Hey Harry with the 21st anniversary update as well. I'm like losing my words, but I thought it was perfect. I thought all these colors kind of went together and I pulled some books out of the debug menu that were a bit thinner and looked stackable, I suppose. I wanted to kind of use some debug items a little bit more than I might usually just because with base game, you can feel very inclined to use the same items over and over again, which is something I try to avoid when doing a base game home. Sometimes it's a little unavoidable, but I don't know. I think I did an okay job in this one with the clutter. So you have this little entryway here. I was going to put a little shelf above that rack. That's not a rack, the hook, <laughs> the hook. But I ended up just kind of shuffling over to this side and I put one of the armchairs here with another piece of artwork. And I was really liking how colorful and vibrant and energetic it was looking. So I tried to carry some more vibrant colors over to some of the other rooms, maybe a little bit more muted than the blue in the living room, but I think I found one that worked for each room. And then we move on to the kitchen, which is a little bit cramped. And this is a color scheme for base game kitchens that I have done a lot. So on second thought, I would probably change it up a little bit. Maybe I would actually go a bit darker. Maybe I would do like black cabinets and stuff. I saw my adorable friend Rachel do black cabinets and counters in her base game home. And that made me want to do it because I personally didn't think it looked great when I did it. But when she did it, I was like, this is gorgeous. So that's how that went. <laughs> but I would probably change up the color scheme a bit in the kitchen, though I do really like it because it is very warm and inviting. I also was able to create a little bit of a breakfast bar with those island counters over there. And then of course there's enough space for your Sims to prepare food. And surprisingly, I was able to get a lot of clutter in here. However, I was so disappointed watching this footage back. Again, I think I mentioned this in another bill that I pre-recorded, but I wanted to use the new kit so badly in here. I got the country kitchen kit and I wanted to use the clutter so badly when I was watching this footage back. Like I really desperately wish that I had included it, but I wanted to ensure that this was a base game only build that just incorporated the new anniversary items and no extra content. So that was my goal. It was really hard to stick to it, but I did it. So hopefully you're proud of me. <laughs> but I put the Lindsay smart speaker in there as well because I actually have my Alexa in the kitchen. I don't want to say the name too loud because otherwise it'll hear me and it'll start yelling at me. But yeah, I have mine in the kitchen because I play music while I'm like cleaning dishes and stuff like that. But my kitchen is also kind of divided from the living room by an island as well. So it's kind of nice if I'm in the living room if I want to listen to music. So that's kind of why I thought of putting it in the kitchen. And then this room here ends up being the dining room. And even though it was a bit of an odd shaped room, I thought that this table fit perfectly. Again, these are anniversary items that we got. The chairs and the table were also by Hey Harry and they are beautiful. I love them. I mainly love the chairs. I think those are my favorite. The table's very simple and beautiful as well, but the chairs are absolutely stunning. And then I also put a brick accent wall in the dining room. Now I was very uncomfortable with it only because you can just clearly see the cutoff from the brick to the slanted diagonal wall and the paint on it. And the only reason that bothers me is because there's trim on the paint that I chose to use on the slanted part of the wall. And of course, there's no trim on the brick. And when I see those things, I mean, it's a game. So I understand this is a weird thing to just be so, I don't know, so focused on. But I hate that. I hate it so much. I usually put a column or something to separate when there's a change in the wall like that. But I usually use a particular column from Get Together that is just very simple and plain, which obviously for base game only, I did not have. So I kind of just pushed past it. You guys probably don't even care, to be frank. Like, <laughs> I'm sitting here having like a partial meltdown over it, but you guys probably don't care at all. But I just wanted there to be an accent room because that wall looked really, really big. And I wanted it to maybe feel a little bit more cozy and actually a little bit smaller because once I placed the table in there, I realized how big the room really was. And I just wanted to break it up a bit. So I didn't want to like size up a big 
piece of artwork or something, I thought that would be a little bit too overwhelming. So I thought the brick with a piece of artwork and two of those little sconces would really help out. And down here is just a half bathroom and then there's kind of this little landing area, I guess, where you would go ahead and wrap around to the left hand side to go up the stairs. And here I thought it would be appropriate to just have a desk and maybe a family computer. I was thinking that this was for a family of at least three Sims. I've been doing that a lot lately. I'm gonna have to come up with more family dynamics because basically all I've been doing are families of three with like two parents and a kid or a toddler. And that is exactly what I did here. This is for two parents and their toddler. And the toddler room is really cute. I could. I could go on about that room forever because I just love kid and toddler rooms more than anything in the world, but we'll get to it. And here is just another little armchair, one of those big clocks, and then we go up to the second story where things get a little bit weird. They get a little bit wonky because those dormer windows really make for a fun freaking floor plan like it was a mess. <laughs> It really was. It was very cramped. And yeah, the little dormers are so awkward. I actually blocked one of them with a wall for the landing space where the stairs lead you up to because it looked so weird. I was going to put like fencing in front of it, but that seemed even weirder. I just didn't know what to do. So I just walled it off. Hopefully you guys don't mind. And if you don't like it, you can always change it. But it's weird. It's a weird place to be up here, all right? The second story is just awkward. But we're doing the master bedroom right now where I again use the brick as an accent wall and I actually use some lighter wood tones mixed with some medium wood tones is what I would consider them. I use one of those dormers to put the wardrobe, which is super convenient. Love that. And then I also put an easel and a few leaning pieces of artwork over here in the other dormer. So maybe one of the parents is an artist. I also gave them a guitar so maybe the other parent is really into music maybe they're just both very creative sims and I don't know if that's what they do for their jobs necessarily but those are definitely their hobbies which I think is lovely I didn't really give too much thought to the family that lived here other than the fact that it was the two parents on the toddler like that's that's pretty much all I had and I wanted to use some of the base game items that are actual activities and skill building items because we don't have many of them in base game. You're kind of limited as to what you can do there. I will say that building with base game can be very versatile. I have continuously surprised myself with what I'm able to do with base game, but I do start to run out of ideas for applicable, I don't know, applicable skills for my actual Sims because we are limited on those skill building items. But anyway, we are working on the toddler's room now, which is so cute. I used the dormer to actually put the toddler bed there, which I was planning on from the get go. I thought that would be perfect. And then they just have the little cubicle dresser, a big old teddy bear in the corner. And I think they actually have a toy chest as well as a bookcase. So there are tons of we'll call them toddler activities, I suppose. Oh, and the toddler blocks. So there, there's a fair amount to actually do in this room for the toddler. And then I actually have to go back into the bathroom upstairs here and give the toddler potty a place as well as the downstairs bathroom. And I also swapped one of the dining chairs out with a high chair, which I don't normally do if there's a toddler in a build because for gameplay, when I'm playing off camera and there's a toddler, I do actually go forth and put the effort into putting that toddler in the high chair for them to eat. However, if I'm doing like the 100 baby challenge or anything on camera with a toddler, nah, they can just they can just eat on the floor, they can eat on the couch. I don't care. I am not going through that. It is a headache. It is a pain to get toddlers in high chairs. I really hope that at some point that is enhanced or resolved because I, I can't lie. I despise it. It's very hard to do. But now we are working on the backyard where I go ahead and flesh out the landscaping. And then what I end up doing is I place a couple of planter boxes and then I take these debug garden signs and I create like these plot lines for a garden in the backyard, which I thought was really nice. There's also a dining table, an outside dining table on the back porch. Even though the porch is a bit, little bit small, I think it worked out just fine. I thought it was really pretty, but... That is pretty much it for the build. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one. I can't wait to hear your thoughts and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. It never rings in California The sun is always shining bright People are smiling, making plans, hiding behind their shades, and you're doing the same. No rain, no flowers.
flowers Nothing's growing where your heart is fire But baby, I bet you're cold without me Even when it's 90 degrees Without me, I bet that you can get in a sleep In the bed, lying away Cause I'm not there beside you You're so damn cold It never rains in California The sun is always shining bright But if the sky would open up You're staying home, you don't get out You always used to love the rain But LA changed you No rain, no flowers Nothing's growing where your heart is fire But baby, I bet you're cold Without me, even when it's 90 degrees Without me, I bet that